what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be the spoiler free minor spoilers mostly spoiler free review for m night Shyamalan's knock at the cabin again it's directed by m night Shyamalan, who is also one of the co-writers for the movie along with steve desmond michael sherman but we know everybody's going to talk about Shyamalan for the most part it is starring dave batista jonathan groff ben aldridge nikki nikki bird Kristen q uh abby quinn and rupert gwynn or Rupert Grint, I meant to say, as you all might know him as Ron Weasley, if you grew up with him like I did from Harry Potter. So the film is following a trio, a family, while vacationing at a remote cabin. A family of three is suddenly held hostage by four strangers who demand they sacrifice one of their own to avert or to avert the apocalypse. Now, Knock at the Cabin, I will say, is easily my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie since Split. I I will say that the film progressively does improve as it goes on, but there were some clunky story bits that were just seemingly forever present. I'll get to that in a second, but I need to praise the performances. Starting with Dave Batista, who, if you're someone like me who grew up watching him in the ring, seeing his transition from that to this is just simply phenomenal. He's excelling here in this role as this teacher named Leonard, who is tasked with having to just make this very tough decision, along with the other three individuals who join him in the cabin. Batista is able to express the inner heartache and regret inside of Leonard in such a profound way profound way the way he's able to express himself in this movie is one of the main reasons why i think he is one of the most successful wrestlers turned actors how he did how he demonstrates everything in this movie with his character is just simply phenomenal uh it's it's literally going to pull at your heartstrings a little bit at times at least it was for me so rupert grant is decent for the amount of screen time that he has abby quinn might be some people's favorite out of the cast simply because of how well she expresses the desperation of her character who is named adrian adrian is a mother that just wants to save her son and when you see her on screen delivering her lines and the tears she's holding back all of that combined with the nature of her character is going to probably make her a standout for some people but i just feel as though dave was just excelling and just firing on all cylinders when it comes to the cast and the performances the performances all around were just outstanding but that isn't to say that you won't find some exchanges to be poor or lackluster because admittedly i did feel that the acting improved as the film went on Shyamalan and his co-writers don't successfully balance humor with the rest of the film's tone i will say that but the comedic moments thankfully weren't around for too long to be much of a setback i actually was quite pleased when the jokes left the equation and instead we just shifted full gear into this relentless thriller that explores and challenges our faith views on humanity and the potential we as humans uh have despite the evil that we know exists in the world knock at the cabin acknowledges that we are capable of some terribly horrific and kind acts i would say it essentially is embracing our flaws and it wants to tell this highly thought-provoking story and it, and it succeeds for the most part it's an optimistic story that terrifies you just as much uh as it will touch your heart it's terrifying you mostly through some haunting imagery because it is pg-13 but i do love how they were able to make the kills still feel very traumatic even though a lot of it is handled off screen the chunk or the clunky story bits that i referenced earlier are just not they're not excusable i want to say but they're tolerable thanks to our wonderful core trio that the story centers on with Wynn, Eric, and Adam. The clunky bits I'm referring to come in the form of logic mishaps and other exposition dumps that I might grow to appreciate during my rewatches. Eric and Adam, played by Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, are very compelling. Groff and Aldridge's chemistry allows you to really fall in love with their characters, but Adam, out of the pairing, was the most complex and the most interesting. His outlook towards humanity is very closed-minded, but explained through various flashbacks, which only adds to the emotional damage that comes during the film's final moments. A certain twist involving the quartet that has broken into their cabin seems to go nowhere, I will say, but it did add to Adam's arc overall. And I will say that, yes, out of the pair, Adam will probably be the ones that people collectively find to be the most interesting. It's not that there's anything wrong with Eric, but Adam and his negative outlook towards humanity really says a lot of, and really just adds a lot more to the magnitude of the events that are playing out in knock at the cabin knock at the cabin really does a great job at giving value to its characters which only adds to the tension that is swelling constantly throughout the film as you begin to grow genuine concern for their safety so it's really 
hitting it when it comes to the character development. The dialogue isn't always the best, but this script was pretty good despite the logical hiccups and the poor exposition dumps that I previously mentioned. There's also a mysterious aspect to the apocalyptic nature of this story that kind of fades away due to the poor logic. Uh, when it comes to how this was shot in some of the cinematography bits, the close-up shots might grow tiresome, but I appreciated how they added importance to certain sequences as well as adding to the emotional punches the film swings during its third act. I, again, need to just tell you, when it comes to how you were going to feel while watching this movie, you're pretty much going to get all of what you might come to expect from a Shyamalan movie. You're going to get something that is suspenseful, something that is very tense, something that is very moving. You might be moved to tears during certain bits. There's not been a single Shyamalan movie where I just haven't felt a whirlwind of emotions and Knock at the Cabin is no different. I was completely impressed with how the story for the most part was n was staying afloat despite again the hiccups that I mentioned. Again, a lot of that comes in how they decide to over explain certain bits. It. the exposition dumping wasn't always that great the dialogue isn't always that great uh certain twist with the with the characters that are in the cabin and how they connect to another person in the trio that seems to be kind of half baked and doesn't really go anywhere but still adds to the overall arc of the character it's a pretty solid movie when it comes to people who are a big fan of M. Night Shyamalan like myself. I loved this movie for the most part. If I were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd want to give it a 7.5. Um, again, it's one of his better films. It is one of his better projects. I would say it's my favorite from him since Split. That's not to say I'm not a fan of Glass. That's not to say I'm not a fan of Old. I think both of those projects are a little bit overhated, but I feel as though with this one, he is back in his bag. Of course, he had co-writers. I would love to see him continue to do this going forward where he just has co-writers and he kind of just leans more on that. He's he's a great director. We know that much. But M. Night Shyamalan, again, has a track record or has become known as one of the directors who teeters that line of being one of the best filmmakers and one of the worst. This, of course, was another W for his legacy and another great addition to his already wonderful filmography that I would say he has. You guys can let me know what you think about Knock in the comment down in the comment section below when you check it out later this weekend. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. I would say that I also thought that the pacing was pretty good as well. I uh, didn't see any issues there with the pacing. But with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.